Hey, welcome everybody, and we're live. This is another Monday at noon, and I'm doing a Freight Broker Bootcamp Live like I do every Monday, where we do a live training. We're now streaming it not only on my Facebook group, but also my Facebook page and on YouTube. So I'm excited because today uh, we're going to talk about three lessons that new brokers can learn from top brokers. So this is three lessons that new brokers need to learn from top freight brokers that have already developed, you know, 100 million, 200 million, 500 million, billion dollar companies. And these are lessons that you can learn from them. So I'm excited that you're here. If you're catching this on replay, fantastic. I love it. If you're live, that's awesome too. Um, and before I, uh, when I, when I posted this live today, when I posted this up on the group and scheduled it, uh, I put a little challenge out there and I said, listen, everybody who, uh, who responds in the comments before, uh, before I go live with a special phrase saying, I'm ready. You might see him in the comments, people like Max Martin and Daniela Garcia and Paul, Paul Spates and Roberto uh, and Maria, uh, Mariah, Juanita, Vicky, all those people posted I'm ready before. They showed me that they were ready. They logged in early. They got here early. And so I have a special prize that I'm going to give away before we start the training. So here's what we got, guys. Everybody's been asking me about this shirt. It says Freightpreneur, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. So I'm going to give away one of these shirts today. I'm going to give it away. Uh, again, it's absolutely free. I'll ship it out to you. And I'm going to randomly pick. I'm going to basically close my eyes, scroll, and I'm going to point to one of the names who logged in early and did what I asked, which was saying, I'm ready. And then all you have to do is send me your mailing address. Uh, you know, you can send that through private message through Facebook. Uh, and then you can, and then I will send this off to you sometime in the next week. Okay. So again, here we go. We're going to give this away now, and then we're going to jump into the training. We're going to say hello to a few people beforehand, but uh, thank you for joining me live. Thank you for those that joined in early and commented on the stream before I went live. So here we go. I'm going to scroll through and I'm just going to randomly point my mouse and wherever it points, that's who we got. All right. So we have, wait, I can't read it. Juanita Owens, Juanita Owens. The winner of the shirt is Juanita Owens. So Juanita, you can just simply send me a message on Facebook through the Freight Broker Bootcamp, you know, Facebook page. Send me a message with your name, your size, and your mailing address, and I will send you off this shirt absolutely free as a small token of my appreciation for you joining us live and for jumping on early. So Congratulations, Juanita. Thank you, everybody else, for playing. Uh, I'd like to continue to do these sorts of things from time to time, maybe not every week, but from time to time, give away maybe a prize or a gift or have some sort of a contest. So I hope you guys are enjoying that. But that's not why you're here today. Today, you're here to learn this. You're here to learn all the notes that I took down before I decided to do this. And today's lesson is three lessons that new freight brokers can learn from top freight brokers. But before we dive into that, let's say hello to a few people who were in the stream here. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, type the city and state where you're logging in from, if you would. For those of you that are that have been here before, you know the drill. Hit me up with the city and state where you're logging in from, and I'll give you a quick shout out. Welcome to uh, uh, Garland Taylor from Houston, Texas. Preet from uh, Singh, New York. We have Sergia. Oh, thanks. Love the shirt too. Thank you. Ian from Atlanta. Mark from Atlanta. We got Terry from Demopolis, Alabama. Jessica is ready. Uh, we've got Mikhail from Petersburg, Florida. We've got Leon from Calmessa, California. Jeez, we got so many people hitting the stream here. We've got Michael from Portland. We got Vicky from Atlanta. We've got Atari from uh, Martin, Tennessee. We've got Asasa from Atlanta. Wow, Atlanta's in the house today. Holy cow. Uh, we got uh, Daniel from Hobbs, New Mexico. Kuka from Riverside, California. Juanita from Indianapolis. Darlene from Jacksonville, Florida. Rico from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, we got Kyle from Madison, Kentucky. 
Now we got people from all over the place. So I thank you for being here. And I promise I'm going to get right to the point here. But again, I want to thank you all. If you're catching this on replay or you're catching this live, that's fantastic. I do these trainings every Monday at noon. Make sure you set a reminder. I do send out emails, but sometimes you don't get them. So set a reminder in your calendar to join me live every Monday at noon Eastern time. And I do a new training every single week. And just for those of you that may not know me, quick intro. My name is Dennis Brown. I've been a an entrepreneur for over 25 years, been very, very blessed, built three multi-million dollar companies in my career, started a freight brokerage in 2003, had zero experience, went on to grow that company to over $80 million in sales, and then sold it in 2016. But about 10 years ago, actually it's 11 years ago now, I launched a program called Freight Broker Bootcamp. It's freightbrokerbootcamp.com. And what it was designed to do is train new brokers and new agents that were interested in making money as a freight broker or freight agent. I started that program back in 2009, have since trained over 8,000 brokers and agents. Uh, we have like a 95 plus percent customer satisfaction ratio, and we offer a 60 day 100% money back guarantee. We're well known to be the most cost effective and comprehensive online freight broker training program available today. So feel free. If you guys are curious about getting started, make sure you check that out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com. So I'm done with the infomercial and we're going to dive into the training at the end of this. For those of you that stick around to the end, I am going to do a live Q and A today. So we're going to do a Q and A and we're going to talk. Uh, you can ask questions about this topic or any topic related to freight brokerage or freight agency or my experience as a freight broker or entrepreneur, or whatever you want to ask. Okay. So but today, I'm going to tee it up. Today, we're going to talk about three, three lessons that new freight brokers can learn from top freight brokers. And I'll bet you can't guess what number one is. Number one is probably one of the most important lessons I learned in my career. Fortunately, I learned it before I was a freight broker. And that is, there's a difference between sales and marketing. Now, let me tell you what I mean. There's a difference between sales and marketing. Large companies like CH Robinson and XPO Logistics and Coyote and, um, you know, and companies like that, those large companies, right? TQL, those large brokerages that have been able to scale to large numbers, okay? The difference between them and smaller brokers is usually one of these things. And this is a big one, which is sales and marketing. There's a difference. Just so you understand, marketing is about creating awareness and interest in your product or service. Okay. So marketing is different than sales. Marketing, once again, is about creating awareness and interest in your product or sales. Sales, for example, let's give you some examples of marketing, online paid advertising, bl blogging, podcasting, YouTube, direct mail, email marketing. Those are all marketing channels and marketing strategies that top companies use. Whereas a lot of smaller companies don't do that. They don't understand marketing. Now, sales, on the other hand, are the activities that lead up to the sale. So they are, for example, cold calling and following up with inbound leads and discovery calls and pricing proposals and overcoming objections. Those are sales activities. And there is a difference. A lot of people don't understand that sales and marketing are different, but they're both important. Now, as a startup, you are obviously going to spend the majority of your time doing sales, but you also do not want to discount the power of marketing. I shared some different strategies like online paid advertising and blogging and podcasting, and YouTube, and email, and direct mail, and all these different strategies, these are powerful strategies in conjunction with your sales activity. So I don't want you to discount that, but it's an important distinction that you understand that the large companies that have grown to scale on it, that you know by name, understand the difference between sales and marketing. And if you want to become successful and grow a highly profitable freight brokerage, you will too. Okay. So that's why I ask you to tune into this channel every week because I do talk a lot about sales. I do talk a lot about marketing and I want you to understand the difference. So that's number one. Number two, systems and technology are not optional. Okay. So what I mean by that is the larger companies have embraced technology. They invest in technology. They invest in systems. 
And if you as a broker are going to scale to a highly profitable business, you will have to invest in systems and technology. Okay. There's two pieces of technology that every broker needs. And that is a transportation management software, otherwise known as a TMS and load boards. Those are two no brainers. You're going to have to have those. Do you need them day one or when you move your first few loads? Probably not the load board. Yeah, but maybe not the TMS, but over time, you're definitely going to need both the transportation management software and you're going to need load boards, right? So those are two common pieces of technology that you're absolutely going to need. All right. Now, I get the question all the time. What about these digital brokers? What about uh, companies like Conway and Uber and Amazon? Here's what I'm going to tell you guys. The only difference between digital brokers and freight brokers is that digital brokers have enhanced technology. They've invested more in technology. Now, they will not replace brokers. Let me just state that as a fact. That is my 100% opinion. They will not replace smart brokers who invest in technology and systems, but they could replace old school brokers who do not adapt. Now, here's the good news. The good news is, you know, for you, the, the bad news for me is I had to invest over a million dollars to develop the software and technology that I created for my brokerage. And, and in order to maintain that software, it cost me six figures per year just to maintain it. Here's the good news for you. The good news for you is it's not going to cost you a fraction of that because there are tons of companies out there already that are building this technology, that have developed this technology, and it's incredibly inexpensive. You know, there's technology, there's TMSs out there that cost, you know, 59 or 89 or 159 or just very low hundreds, hundreds of dollars per month versus millions of dollars that I had to invest when I started back in 2003. So you have to invest in technology and systems. You will not grow unless you invest in those. But again, the good news is that that technology is very prevalent. There are tons of providers out there, software providers, SaaS providers, technology providers that are filling that gap. As a matter of fact, you guys can check out Go to my blog, freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash blog. And one of my, my most popular posts is the top 10 freight broker software to choose, right? Top 10 freight broker software to choose. You can check that out on my blog. Again, freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash blog. There's a list and a video, the whole nine yards. You guys can check that out. These are some of the most popular and comprehensive and well-known freight broker softwares out there if you guys are curious of that. So that's number two. You have to understand and invest in systems and technology, okay? It's not optional. And number three on the list is to grow, you need to learn how to hire and retain top talent. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that if you want to build a million dollar brokerage, you don't need a big team. Matter of fact, you could do that with no team. You could do that as a solo broker or a solo agent. But if you want to grow to 5 million or 10 million or 20 million or 100 million or 500 million, it's not about how smart you are. It's not about how hard you work. It's about building a team. And in order to build a team, a well-oiled machine and a highly effective and productive and profitable team, you need to learn how to hire and retain talent. You need to find people that fill the gaps and fill the weaknesses that you have and also support the strengths that you have in order to build a team that's going to grow that business to high seven figures or eight figures or even nine figures, you're going to need to develop a team. And so you need to learn how to hire and retain top talent. Again, learning how to effectively hire and train top talent is one of the biggest differentiators between a million dollar broker and a hundred million dollar broker. That's a fact learning how to hire, find, hire, and retain top talent is one of those skills that is the biggest differentiator between a million dollar brokerage and a hundred million dollar brokerage. And you have to understand turnover costs, meaning turnover when a, an employee turns over, whether you have to fire them because they were a bad hire or whether they voluntarily turn over and leave your organization and quit, it's very, very expensive. So let me just give you some example. Statistics show that the cost to replace an individual employee can range. 
if you have to replace an employee who quits, you can cost between a half, between one half and double the employee's annual salary. And those are conservative estimates. So half. So if you're paying somebody $50,000 a year, that's somewhere between $25,000 and $100,000. It'll cost you to replace that person. That's the entire replacement cost, meaning finding them, hiring them, training them, right? That's the whole process as a replacement. Now, so if you, if in a 50 person organization, this will blow your mind, pay attention. Again, the cost of replacing an individual employee is anywhere between 50% and two times double the cost of that person's annual salary. Now, if you're in a 50 person organization that provides an average salary of $50,000 per year, one turnover, okay, or the turnover, not one turnover, but the turnover cost on an annual basement for replacing employees could cost anywhere between $330,000 and $1.3 million. Now, let me say that again. If you have an organization, if you have a brokerage that has 50 employees, just with normal turnover, right? Normal turnover in the industry, it could cost you, if you're paying them an average of 50,000, it could cost you anywhere between $330,000 and $1.3 million per year. So you have to understand the value of learning how to hire and retain top talent is one of the biggest differentiators between small brokers and large brokers. And so those are three lessons that you have to understand that, that you want to learn early, right? Number one, there's a huge difference between sales and marketing, but you have to understand both. Number two, systems and technology are not optional. They're required. You have to invest in technology, but today it's not very expensive. So that's the pro for you. And number three, in order to grow, you have to learn how to hire and retain top talent, okay? So those are three differentiators. Those are three lessons that you can learn from top brokers and apply to your business, whether you're a startup, whether you've been in business for 12 months, 24 months, five years, maybe you're not growing the way you want. Think about those three things. Think about how they may be holding you back and you're not maybe investing in them the way you should. And I think um, if you put some strategy together, you listen to these trainings, um, I think you'll see great success if you take those lessons to heart. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure that you share the stream. Again, make sure you like and share the stream. I don't charge you admission every week. There wasn't a, you didn't, I didn't require you to hit a credit card before you logged in and heard this. So make sure you share the stream, like this post and share the stream. That's the price of admission guys. And so Again, for those of you that are curious about becoming a freight broker or freight agent, make sure you check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Again, been in business over 10 years, trained over 8,000 students, have a 60-day 100% money back guarantee. If you're not happy, just send us a message and we will send your money back, okay? It doesn't happen very often, but from time to time it does. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Listen, I'm going to jump into some Q&A, but I'm going to grab a quick drink. So on a scale of 1 to 10... Right now, on a scale of one to 10, before we start doing questions, all right? And you can be totally honest with me, guys. If it was a one and I sucked, that's okay. Tell me it was a one. If it was a five because you were like, eh, not, not great, but okay, tell me, be honest. If it was a 10 and I hit it out of the park, let me know. Type in the chat box and let me know one to 10 where you think I scored. The reason why I'm asking this isn't to placate my ego. You can tell me it was a one. I don't care. I'd rather hear honest feedback so that I can curate and come up with future lessons and future trainings that benefit you. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you, right? This is all knowledge. These are all things that I've learned over the last 25 years that I want to share. But the problem being after being going through these things for 25 years is that you get too close to those lessons. You think everybody lived and walked in your shoes and they didn't. And so, you know, I'm always searching for new lessons and opportunities to try to share with you guys to help you throughout your journey, okay? So I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm getting some good feedback. Awesome, thank you. Any and all feedback is appreciated. Again, if it's a one, it's a one. Um, I may hit you back and wanna know why because I wanna improve on it, but ultimately I appreciate your feedback. So I'm gonna grab a drink and while I do, you guys can start hitting me up with some questions in the chat box, all right? So we're gonna jump into some questions. Um, before we do that, how cool is this shirt? You guys love it, right? So 
I, you know, I designed this myself um, and bought a bunch for me. And so now I've, I've got some extras that I've, or I'll order some. And from time to time, I'm going to be giving them out, right? So I'm going to be giving them out maybe on some of these lives, maybe through some different promotions on YouTube or Facebook. But, you know, I thought it was kind of a cool, cool shirt and a cool gift to give away because rather than being an entrepreneur, you're a freightpreneur, right? So someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. That's what freight brokers do. So, all right. So here we are. Let's see. Give me a moment. All right. All right. So the questions, let's see where the questions are. So I'm going to scroll down through here. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Everybody, thank you for the, the eights, the nines, the tens, all of them. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Serena, we look forward to helping you as you join Freight Broker Bootcamp. Serena, you, you get it, girl. This will definitely help. We look forward to it. All right. So we're going to jump into some Q&A. Now, I will not get to all the questions. I'm sorry. I won't get to all the questions. I never do. But from time to time, I will come back in later this week and I will type in or I will try to reply through the thread to some of the questions. Now, um, for those of you that are asking questions, remember what I said before, like and share the stream. If you want me to answer your questions and highlight you on the screen and answer your questions specifically, it might be a good idea to share the stream. It's not a big price to pay, right? Yeah, is it a bribe? Absolutely. I want everybody to understand and learn about Freight Broker Bootcamp because the free trainings that I give here are worth, they're worth 10 times what you're going to pay for in most courses. And I'm going to say that out loud, okay? It's okay. I don't mind saying it because it's true. That's what I've been told by you guys, right? The free trainings that I provide are 10 times more valuable than the paid trainings that most you know, courses offer, right? So if you want to, if you want to ask a question, share the stream and let me know that you shared it in the, in the, uh, in the chat box. That would be awesome. So here we go. All right. So let's jump into a couple questions. All right. Scrolling, scrolling. All right, so this is a question I get all the time and I might as well answer it again. Amanda, if we're hitting it wide open, how long should it take to build our clientele? So the answer to that, Amanda, is I don't know. You know, situations vary. Every person has a different life experience. Every person has different goals. Every person has different leverage. Every person has different motivation. And so the challenge is for me to answer, how long is it going to take you to build a clientele? Here's what I can tell you. My first month in the business, I moved like 12 loads. Not a lot, 12 loads. Year one, we did $1.2 million in sales. You've heard through other interviews that I've done with past students where we've had agents that have done over a million dollars their first year, almost 5 million their second year. You've heard other agents and brokers that said, uh, that have done, you know, like Franklin and Deckway, they did over $25,000 in profit his second month, right? In his first, in his second month in the business. And so everybody's different. There are other people that won't get those results. Some people will struggle for months before they get their first client, but that's because they haven't taken the time to develop the skills and invest in themselves. One of the most powerful, thing, powerful things you can do, Amanda, and I applaud you for this, is to find a mentor that's already done what you're looking to do um, invest in yourself. If they have a course or they have training or they have coaching, invest in yourself by investing with them. Um, that's part of the reason why I put Freight Burger Bootcamp together. It takes that piece of my brain and allows me to share it with you in an online format, very cost effectively. So I would say realistically, depending upon your skill set, you will start seeing some success in your first few months. You will start seeing, you should start seeing significant success in your second six months, right? So in your first three months, you should see a little bit of success. You'll start seeing some freight moving. In your next nine months of that first year, the next six to nine months of that next year, you'll start you'll start building momentum. It's not unusual for a new broker or a new agent their first year to do four or $500,000 in sales um, or more, up to a million or more their first year. 
Um, again, uh, you know, those situations vary. I can't predict the future. I'm not here promising you that you're going to make a million dollars or you're going to make $1. I'm not promising you anything. Okay. What I can promise you is that I've provided that piece of my brain. I put it in the course and it's available to you very inexpensively. Plus I do these free trainings for all of you. So I hope that helps. So I'm scrolling through here. Let me just find some good questions. Here's an interesting question by Kyle. How many customers should a new agent with no experience try to obtain? Tricky answer. As many as you can possibly service at a very high level. There's the answer. Not too many that, that the service is compromised. Not too few that you're not making any money as many customers as you can possibly handle while offering a high level of service to each one of those customers. For some people, that might be one. For most people, it's probably going to be for an agent somewhere between five and 10, right? Beyond that, depending upon the volume of freight that they have, each one of them, you, things may start falling through the cracks. And again, that answer varies widely from, you know, person to person, it's kind of subjective, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a ballpark, a ballpark. So I hope that helps. Good question. Thank you, Kyle. Denise, thank you for taking Freight Broker Bootcamp. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you for the kind words. All right, so what do we got for questions, guys? More questions. Jeez, I'm not seeing that many questions today, which is unusual. Let me scroll back through here and see what I'm missing. All right, so here's one. All right, so Garf asked, best load boards. He's in Canada and moves freight in the United States. So the best load boards in the United States, I can only represent those. I can't talk about Canada or other countries. The best load boards in the United States, the two, my two favorite, there are many load boards and you can go to my blog at freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash blog and search for load boards. And you'll see a post where I think I show the top 10. I show a top 10 list, but my two favorite are the DAT, the DAT and truck stop. Those are my two favorite. I've used many others. Matter of fact, all of those other ones that I list, I've logged into and used at some point during my career. And so, yeah, those are my two favorite. I hope those help. All right, so Donna asks, how much is your training course? All right, so... We've changed the pricing and membership options recently in the last, I don't know, the last year we've changed them. So we have two membership options. We have a gold membership, which is a one year unlimited access, full support membership. Gives you everything you need to get started, um, including, you know, all the training, the videos, the contracts, everything, right? So that's your gold membership. That's $185 one time, no recurring costs, okay? There's another option which is our platinum membership, which is a lifetime membership, meaning you never have to pay again. You have lifetime access plus lifetime support. Plus you get VIP support, which means you get bumped up in the, on the support list. Plus it offers everything the gold offers, plus a bunch of bonuses, including, um, you know, some trainings that I did with seven figure uh, clients, you know, brokers that are doing seven figures and, in advanced strategies there. It includes how to overcome sales objections, common sales objection training. It also includes our uh, cold calling script library. So that's our platinum membership, which is lifetime and probably the most popular. And that's $389 one time. Okay. So you asked Donna, I appreciate you asking for anybody else that was curious, just check it out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com, www.freightbrokerbootcamp.com. And you'll see all the details. Okay. So I hope you guys appreciate that. Again, you know, we've had over 8,000 students go through that training and, um, and we offer a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. So you can't lose. 
All right, so I'm going through questions here. Let's see. Scrolling. Here's a good question from Jennifer Stovall. On average, what's the amount of time that most people require to complete the Freight Broker Bootcamp training? Okay, so it's very hard when you say most. Again, it's subjective. I'm going to give you a range of my experience with having a bunch of students. From what I see is it usually takes between four and eight hours of actual studying during, you know, over a period of time. Now, some people complete that in two weeks. Some people take months to complete that. But on average, I tell people it's usually somewhere between four and eight hours, and it's usually something that's done within two to four weeks. That's the timeline that most students take. Now, you have an unlimited timeline to go through the training if you're a platinum member, and you have an entire year to go through the training if you're a gold member, okay? So there is no time crunch, meaning you're not pressed. You don't have to worry about my schedule. You can access the training 24-7, 365. You don't need me online. You get full support online. If you're a member, gold member, you get our gold support. If you're a platinum member, you get our VIP support. Either way, you're going to be supported. Okay? Good question. Thanks for asking, Jennifer. Thank you for the kind word, Sugar. Thank you. Sugar Plum. Nice. Thank you for the kind words. Appreciate it, Sugar Plum. Here's an honest question from Ian. How do you think this pandemic will affect our business? Here's a couple of dynamics that I know. Early in the pandemic, freight went way down. Since things have started to recover, freight is starting to grow very rapidly and go back up, okay? Now, here's what I also know, and this is an interesting dynamic that most people don't understand. Many carriers have went out of business. Many other carriers have their trucks parked. Many brokers have went out of business because they weren't prepared for what was going to happen with the pandemic. So here's the good part. That means that the demand is higher than ever for good brokers and agents. That's a fact. Because a shipper's job is harder than ever. You have less carriers, you've got less brokers, and therefore brokers that can step into the gap and fill that need, right, are gonna be the victors, are gonna, are gonna win in the end game. So it's all about timing. And that's why I tell people right now is a great opportunity to start your freight brokerage. Why? Because demand is high and when there's rate, and capacity volatility, that's the best time to join the market. Why? The reason why is because when rates are stable and capacity is stable, shippers don't like to make changes because it's that old adage, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But when one of their carriers goes out of business or the rates go through the roof or one of their brokers starts having service failures, guess what shippers do? They open the door and they start entertaining new opportunities. So whenever there's any sort of rate volatility or capacity volatility, fuel volatility, any sort of volatility in the market, that is the best time to join the market as a broker or an agent. Thank you for asking. Kenny, major companies can help you Major brokers, top brokers can help you by remembering and planning and using those three lessons that I shared with you and taking those to heart and applying those to your business. That's how big brokers and big companies can help you. Thank you, Pamela. I appreciate it. Pamela Martin asked, suggested that I have somebody else scroll through the chat box. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I should have somebody do that, but sometimes it's just hard to get somebody to come in. I've got v, all my staff. I have VAs 
and I have assistants and people that work for me. I've got a team of about five or six people. They work, they're all over the country and sometimes it's just a little challenging and I just like to get in here and get dirty. I don't mind. Thank you though. Trucker B1111, my class is pre-recorded. So all of my all of my training is all pre-recorded. It's articles and videos and contracts and lessons. It's all pre-recorded. Freightburger Bootcamp is not a live course. This is a live training that I do every Monday. This is outside of the course, right? So the course is done um, where you can access it 24-7, 365. You do not need me to be live. You can access it from your phone. You can ask, access it at midnight. You can access it from Honduras or from Australia or from New York. doesn't matter where or when you can access the training. Welcome, Alex from Honduras. Welcome, welcome. Marshall, I like Truck Stop. I like the features they have. I think it's a good investment. Again, one load, one or two loads is going to cover the entire cost of that load board and everything else from there is profit. So I think it's a good investment. That and the DAT are my top favorite load boards. Yes, if you're driving Garland, don't text. I don't want you to crash, my friend. Be safe. All right, so here's a question from Jazz Deep. How do new brokers get freight broker agents to work with them? All right, so here's an interesting question I get all the time. So if you are a broker and you are planning on doing the agent business model where you're hiring independent freight agents who are independent contractors working on straight commission, if that's your business model, that's what you're planning on doing, it can be challenging as a new broker. Here's why you will have a very difficult time trying to recruit and hire experienced agents. Here's why. Because they have everything to offer you and you have nothing to offer them, right? They can go any number of places with a book of business and experience and you have very little as a startup to offer them as a startup. Because again, all you have is your broker authority. Maybe you got a TMS and a load board. You don't have a brand, you don't have processes in place. You don't have capital. I mean, it's, it's too early in your business to try to hire experienced agents. Now, as a new broker, if you're looking to hire agents, you can hire agents who don't have experience and don't have a book of business. So for example, if you were a new broker and you wanted to hire people that had graduated from my Freight Burger Bootcamp online course, those people would probably be happy to come work for you um, as long as they had a home and as long as you were paying them a fair commission and as long as you were had some technology and support for them, they would probably come and work for you as an agent. So if you're looking to hire inexperienced agents, a couple of ways you can do that. I would suggest you, you can place a job ad on indeed.com. That's one way to do it. Very inexpensive. Uh, hire, you know, advertise that you're willing to hire inexperienced agents. You'll get tons of resumes. Um, you can also go on LinkedIn and you can also do um, some prospecting on LinkedIn. Search and find people who are inexperienced agents that are looking for an opportunity. They're out there. Uh, or maybe they're not ha happy at their current place. That's another way you can do it. So those are a couple of strategies. Um, you could also join groups on LinkedIn or you could join groups on Facebook and you could participate there and you will likely find uh, people in the comments and in the threads and in the posts that are struggling and need a broker to work with for inexperienced agents. But if you are a new broker trying to hire experienced agents, it's gonna be challenging. I'm gonna be very upfront with you. That's why I always recommend as a new broker, you build your own business first based off your own customers, your own operations, your own support, your own systems. And then once you have that honed down, remember I ran my own internal brokerage for three years before I hired my first agent. 
Okay. 2003 to 2006, I, I ran my own brokerage. I grew my brokerage to over 6 million in sales internally before I ever hired my first agent. I knew I needed to have an established presence. I knew I had to have technology. I knew that I had to have processes in place. I knew I had to have capital. I knew I had to have a well-oiled machine before I could hire agents and have any sort of value to provide them. And so you don't necessarily have to wait three years like I did, but I would definitely establish your customer base first and then your, your customer base, your systems, your processes, and then go out to the market and see if you can hire experienced agents. If you're looking to hire inexperienced agents, you typically won't have a problem because there are plenty out there that are looking for an opportunity. Good question. So Robert, the difficulty of obtaining new customers in 2020 is underestimated. Staffing work remote, many shippers only review. Well, Robert, I don't know your background, but here's what I can tell you. Almost all shippers are willing to add new providers right now. Here's why. Because we have tons of rate volatility. We have tons of uh, capacity volatility, right? There was tons of issues that came into this pandemic and they're pre preparing for anything in the future. I've had students that in their first week, their first month, their first couple months have landed plenty of clients. Franklin and Deckway is a perfect example. Just had an interview with him. He did $25,000 his second month. He landed a very large shipper, which typically wouldn't, right? He landed a couple, multiple shippers, but he landed one large shipper that typically you would think wouldn't add new providers. They're a well-known retail brand. I'm not going to give you the name, but ultimately, um, you know, many providers are open to hearing new opportunities if you're different. If you're focusing on just rates, if you're just focusing on being like everybody else, you're always going to run into challenges getting customers. But if you're different, you differentiate why they need to do business with you, how they'll do business with you, and the fact that they can trust you, they will give you an opportunity. Not all of them, again, depends upon your strategy. Are you doing sales? Or are you doing marketing? Are you doing cold calling? Are you doing warm calling? Are you doing referrals? Are you doing, again, how are you getting your leads? How are you getting your clients? How are you creating your opportunities? Um, don't lose the faith. You know, if you're getting, having some challenges right now, getting clients, I promise you, you need to find the right niche. You need to identify those, those different opportunities and you need to just get busy and what you lack in sophistication, you make up for in numbers, enthusiasm and differentiation. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Vicki. I think you're awesome too. Thank you. Here's a question from Excelsior LTL. Without a TMS, can you provide a shipper a quote? Sure. You don't need a TMS to provide a quote. Uh, you can provide a quote a variety of different ways. You can, there's rating software built into many of the load boards. You can call carriers from uh, a load board. Um, you can post a load and take inbound calls from carriers that are going to offer you rates. So there's a variety of different ways you can, you can generate rating and market intelligence without a TMS. Now, I strongly suggest you invest in a TMS. If you're going to get serious about the business, you don't need it day one or week one or even month one, but you're definitely going to need it fairly near into the future. Um, if you're going to start moving freight with shippers, right? So you know, maybe you don't need it till you get your first shipper, but ultimately, you know, you're going to need it somewhere along the line. It's a pretty small investment to do that. Um, you don't need to invest tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars like I did in order to get started. Um, you know, there, there's some very cost effective TMSs out there. Oh, and if it's LTL, the easiest way to generate a quote is go to an LTL provider like Yellow or UPS and get a quote from them with the exact, you know, class and zip code and zip code and dimensions and all the LTL requirements. And then just simply get that price and then mark it up and provide that quote if it's LTL. I only mention that because your title says Excelsior LTL. Here's a good question. Aziz asks, is it a must for shippers to sign the shipper broker agreement before doing business? This is a misconception. The answer is no. Most of the shippers that we did business with 
we did, they did not sign our shipper broker agreement. Some of them did. Many of the shippers had their own shipper broker agreement, but many of them we never had an agreement with. We had an understanding and, and there was limited risk because again, the cargo and the liability insurance of the carrier is what covers any sort of issues associated in transit. Um, and so we had verbal agreements and we had documents that we had passed back and forth via email, whether that be about rates, whether that be about accessorial charges, whether that be about service level. But many of those we did not have agreements with. Sometimes you will find, and I'm glad you pointed this out, Aziz, sometimes you'll find that one of the biggest sticking points and challenges with getting a new prospect in a new customer in any industry is getting them to sign a contract. The contract, sometimes they're the fear of the contract or sending it to their lawyers and it getting marked up and causing all kinds of friction. Those are issues that you have. In brokerage, you have very limited limited risk in brokerage if you have the proper carrier with the proper liability insurance, the proper cargo insurance. Everything else is done via email. It's ideal if you either sign their broker shipper agreement or they sign yours, but you absolutely don't need to start moving freight for a client the first time uh, with a contract. You can do it with simply having a rate agreement and the details about the shipment. So good question. Thank you for asking. All right, so here's a good question from Lando. He says, what could be a good follow-up question to the shipper if he does not need your service at the moment? So a couple follow-up questions would be, um, when is a good time to follow up with you? I'd love to follow up with you in the future. Okay, follow up with me in 30 days. Follow up with me in six months. Follow up with me next year, right? So asking them when, that's an obvious question. You'd love to be able to get permission to follow up with them in the future. And by asking them that and them giving you an answer, you now have permission to follow up. It's no longer a cold call. You've spoken with them once. They asked you to follow up in 30 or 60 or 90 days. You're now following up with them. Okay. So that's one example. That's the least common denominator. So if they're saying that they don't need your service at the moment, what you might ask them is, I, I totally appreciate that, Lando. But let me ask you one question before I go. How are you handling the rate and capacity volatility? And are you prepared for what might happen in the next three to six months after the election? Boom. Now, they may not respond, but here's the reality. Your goal is to continue the dialogue right? So that's, that's an example of how you might respond to somebody who says they don't need your service today. You simply respond to them and say, let me ask you, a, I appreciate that Lando. Let me ask you one question before I go. How are you handling and are you prepared for the rate volatility and rate and capacity volatility going on in the market, particularly over the next three to six months after the election? That's going to make them think. See, you have to make them think. You have to instill a little bit of doubt, a little bit of fear that they're prepared in order to continue that dialogue and develop that relationship until you can find the right fit. Good question. Hope that helps. Garland, awesome. You're welcome anytime. Here's an interesting question by Deontay. Do you suggest taking unpopular lanes such as four stops, four deliveries to get your foot in the door as a new broker? I do suggest that if you're, if you're unable to get primary lanes, getting ugly freight is better than no freight. But, all right, so getting a one pick, four drop load can be challenging. So the only way you take that load is if you are totally confident that you can cover it at a very high level of service, right? So, you know, just so you guys understand what Don, Deontay is referring to is there are not all freight is created equal. Not every lane, not every load is created equal. Some are much harder to cover than others. Some are more expensive than others. Some are less expensive, right? And so 
a challenging load sometimes can be a one pick four drop load because if you're if you're doing four different drops, it's usually not going to be a two day load or an overnight load. It's going to be maybe three or four days. It's going to tie the truck up. And the longer the load, the more stops, the more that can go wrong, right? And so, you know, covering a load like that is a lot more challenging than a one pick, one drop load. And so Deontay brings up an interesting point. So my answer is yes, I will take lanes where shippers are having challenges and having problems and need help, but only if I'm really confident that I can fulfill that at a high level. Now, I'm not afraid to charge for that, right? I'm not going to be the cheapest guy if you're giving me a four drop load because not everybody's going to be able to cover that and it's difficult for the shipper. So the complexity and the difficulty will increase the price, okay? And so ultimately, don't be afraid to charge, but also don't be afraid to take loads that are somewhat challenging, especially to get your foot in the door. All right, last question, guys. We've been going for almost an hour now. Let's see what we got. One more question. Um, all right, guys, that's it, I guess. So we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, congratulations to, I forgot who won. Who won the, uh, who won this? I forgot who won this. Whoever's going to send me the message, whoever won this, what was it? Uh, let's see. Jeez, I can't remember who won this darn thing. Oh, I can't even scroll that far back. Congratulations on winning this. Make sure if you won this that you send me a message through um, Facebook from my Facebook page with your size and address where I can send this to you and I'll send this out. Appreciate you guys being here. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker, freight agent, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Worst case scenario, make sure you're back here Monday at noon. We're going to do another live training. I don't know what the topic is going to be, but I, I promise you I'll do my best to hit it out of the park. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If I did it, a good job. Share the stream. Let everybody know about this. Greatly appreciate it. Have an awesome day and we'll talk soon.